Today, I'm gonna to show you how to plan, position, and connect your canless recessed lighting in your project with just a little bit of fourth grade math. I'll show you how to plan an aesthetic lighting layout for your ceiling and what to do when those pesky joists get in the way. And for those of you that are math averse, I'll show you a website that does all of the calculations for you. So be sure to stick around for that. Here are some of the tools and materials I'll be using for this part of the job. Many of these are linked in the description if you need them. I'm adding canless recessed lighting to our unfinished basement in an area that'll eventually become a maker space, which is like an art studio, crafting room, and engineering space all together. You have a ton of flexibility when planning your lighting layout. Most of the recessed lights I see are between four and six feet apart, but it's really up to you. Start with deciding how many lights and how many rows that you want to install. My room is 207 inches long and 140 inches wide, with a small inset space in front of the closet. I'm using six lights in this main area and dividing them into two rows of three lights each. To determine spacing between lights, you'll need to do a little math, but it's not too complex. For any row of lights, you can find the distance between each light in the row by taking the length of the wall they run parallel to and dividing by the number of lights in the row. For example, I've got three lights in a row parallel to the 207 inch wall. So I take the wall length, 207 inches, divided by the number of lights, three, which gives me 69 inches. So I'll have 69 inches between each pair of lights. Next, we calculate the distance between the outside lights of the row and the wall by taking the distance between the lights and dividing by two. In this row, we just calculated the distance between lights to be 69 inches. Dividing by two gives us 34 and a half inches. So the distance from the outside lights in the row to the wall is 34 and a half inches. You can double check your math by adding these numbers up and making sure their sum is equal to the total wall length. 34 and a half plus 69 plus 69 plus 34 and a half is 207 inches. The math is good. The math is real good. The same approach works for the other wall as well. I'll take the wall length, 140 inches, divide by the number of lights, which in this case is two, and this gives me 70 inches. So there'll be 70 inches between the lights. Then divide 70 inches by two to determine the distance between the lights and the walls. 70 divided by two is 35. So the rows will set 70 inches from each other and 35 inches from each wall. So this will be the arrangement of the canless recessed lighting in my makerspace. As I show you this, please bear in mind that I'm a science teacher by trade and not an electrician. So be sure to consult a professional on anything that doesn't make sense. Having said that, please feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions and I'll try to answer them. For more unique lighting arrangements, or if you flunked math in high school and the calculations that I just described triggered raw feral human emotion, there's a website you can use that does the work for you. Check this thing out from recesslighting.com. I'll include a link to this website in the description for anyone that wants to ditch the math and get down to business. Scroll down and select your lighting layout and then punch in your room dimensions and hit calculate. Boom, it's done for you. Yes, we're living in the future. What's next, artificial intelligence? <laughs> for those of you that don't trust the newfangled technologies, you can use it as a self-check like I am. What if a joist is in the way? You can totally adjust your position a bit to get out from under the joist. A few inches one way or the other will be just fine. You don't need to though. These canless lights are only a half inch thick, which is probably the same thickness as your drywall. No problem, move it if it'd make you feel better or plug and play right below the joist. Now that I know where my lights will be positioned, I'll secure the junction box for each light in the near vicinity of my calculated light positions. Then I'll run my 14-2 Romex between each light until all six have connectivity with the switches that are running them. Finally, it's time to connect my Romex to my lights. This is a canless six inch light by Halo, and it's pretty slick. I strip a few inches of the protective outer jacket off of the Romex to expose the black, white, and ground wires and pop open the junction box to connect them to wires of the same color coming from the light. Something that I love about this halo light is that it comes with push-in wire connectors, making it super easy. The connectors are already linked to the wires coming from the light and they have three other positions that you can use for additional wiring. After pushing in my wires and making sure they're not going anywhere, I just close up the junction box. If your canless lights don't come with built-in connectors, you could of course also use traditional wire nuts or my new favorite connector, Wago lever nuts, to connect your Romex to your lights. 
After all the light connections are made, you're ready for drywall. And after drywall is up, you connect each junction box to its light, like this. Then hold the spring tabs on the light back and raise the light into the hole. Those springs will pull the light flush into position. So easy. If this video is helping you in some way, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up. And after seeing this video, if you feel like I've earned your subscription, just drill that Man Cycle logo. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.